And it was at that time, at the end of a year and four months of Avram's dwelling in the land of Felishim in Gerar, that Elohim visited Sarah and Yahuwah remembered her and she conceived and bore a son to Abraham. And Abraham called the name of the son which was born to him, which Sarah bore to him, Yitzchak. And Abraham circumcised his son Yitzchak at eight days old, as Elohim had commanded Abram to do, unto his seed after him. And Abraham was one hundred, and Sarah ninety years old, and Yitzchak was born to them. And the child grew up, and he was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast upon the day that Yitzchak was weaned. And Shem and Eber and all the great people of the land and Avimelech, king of the Felishim, and his servants, and Pichol, the captain of his host, came to eat and drink and rejoice at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of his son Yitzchak's being weaned. Also Terach, the son of Abraham, and Nahor, his brother, came from Haran, and they all belonging to them, for they greatly rejoiced on hearing that a son had been born to Sarah. And they came to Abraham, and they ate and drank at the feast which Abraham made upon the day of Yitzchak's being weaned. And Terach and Nacor rejoiced with Abraham, and they remained with him many days in the land of Felishim. And that time Serag, the son of Reu, died in the first year of the birth of Yitzchak, son of Abraham. And all the days of Serag were two hundred and thirty-nine years, and he died. And Yishmael, the son of Abraham, was growing up in those days. He was fourteen years old when Serag born Yitzchak to Abraham. And Elohim was with Yitzmael, the son of Abraham, and he grew up, and he learned to use the bow and became an archer. And when Yitzchak was five years old, he was sitting with Yishmael at the door of the tent. And Yishmael came to Yitzchak and seated himself opposite to him. And he took the bow and drew it and put the arrow in it and intended to slay Yitzchak. And Sarah saw the act which Ismael desired to do to her son Yitzchak, and it grieved her exceedingly on account of her son. And she sent for Abraham and said to him, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for her son shall not be heir with my son, for thus did he seek to do unto him this day. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah, and he rose up early in the morning, and he took twelve loaves and a bottle of water, which he gave to Hagar, and sent her away with her son. And Hagar went with her son into the wilderness, and they dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, with the inhabitants of the wilderness, and Yishmael was an archer, and he dwelt in the wilderness a long time. And he and his mother afterward went to the land of Mitzrayim, and they dwelt there. And Hagar took a woman for her son from Mitzrayim, and her name was Meribah. And the woman of Yishmael conceived and bore four sons and two daughters. And Yishmael and his mother and his woman and children afterward went and returned to the wilderness. And they made themselves tents in the wilderness in which they dwelt, and they continued to travel, and then to rest monthly and yearly. And Elohim gave Yishmael flocks and herds and tents on account of Abram, his father. And the man increased in cattle, and Yishmael dwelt in deserts and in tents, traveling and resting for a long time. Mm -hmm. And he did not see the face of his father. And in some time after, Abraham said to Sarah, his woman, I will go and see my son Yishmael, for I have a desire to see him, for I have not seen him in a long time. And Abraham rode upon one of his camels to the wilderness to seek his son Yishmael, for he heard that he was dwelling in a tent in the wilderness with all his belongings to him. And Abraham went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent of Yishmael about noon. 
And he asked after Yishmael and found the woman of Yishmael sitting in the tent with her children and Yishmael, her man and his mother were not with them. And Abram asked the woman of Yishmael saying, where is Yishmael gone? And she said, he has gone to the field to hunt. And Abraham was still mounted upon the camel, for he would not get off the ground, as he had sworn to his woman, Sarah, that he would not get off the camel. And Abraham said to Yishmael's woman, My daughter, give me a little water that I may drink, for I am fatigued from the journey. And Yishmael's woman answered and said to Abraham, We have neither water nor bread. And she continued sitting in the tent and did not notice Abraham, neither did she ask him who he was. But she was beating her children in the tent, and she was cursing them. And she also cursed her man, Yishmael, and reproached him. And Abraham heard the words of Yishmael's woman to her children, and he was very angry and displeased. And Abraham called to the woman to come out to him from the tent, and the woman came and stood opposite to Abraham, for Abraham was still mounted upon the camel. And Abraham said to Yishmael's woman, When your man, Yishmael, returns home, say these words to him. A very old man from the land of Pelishim came hither to seek you, and thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing you were not here, he spoken to me and said, When Yishmael, your man, returns, tell him thus did this man say, When you come home, put away this nail of the tent which you have placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Abraham finished his instructions to the woman, and he turned and went off on the camel homeward. And after that, Yishmael came from the chase, and he and his mother, and returned to the tent, and his woman spoke these words to him. A very old man from the land of Palestine came to see you, and thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing you were not at home, he said to me, When your man comes home, tell him thus, says the old man, put away the nail of the tent which you have placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Yishmael heard the words of this woman, and he knew that it was his father, and that his woman did not honor him. And Yishmael understood his father's words that he had spoken to his woman, and Yishmael hearkened to the voice of his father, and Yishmael cast off that woman, and she went away. And Yishmael afterward went to the land of Kenyan, and he took another woman, and he brought her to his tent to place where he then dwelt. And at the end of three years, Abraham said, I will go again and see Yishmael, my son, for I have not seen him for a long time. And he rode upon his camel and went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent of Yishmael about noon. And he asked after Yishmael, and his woman came out of the tent, and she said, He is not here, my lord, for he has gone to hunt in the fields and to feed the camels. And the woman said to Abraham, Turn in, my lord, into the tent, and eat a morsel of bread, for your soul must be worried on account of the journey. And Abraham said to her, I will not stop for I am in haste to continue my journey. But give me a little water to drink, for I have thirst. And the woman hastened and ran to the tent, and she brought out water and bread to Abraham, which she placed before him. And she urged him to eat, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted, in it, and he blessed his son Yishmael. And he finished the, his meal, and he blessed Yahuwah. And he said to Yishmael's woman, when Yishmael come home, say these words to him. A very old man from the land of Palestine came hither and asked after you, and you were not here, and I brought him out bread and water, and he ate and drank, and his heart was comforted. And he spoke these words to me. When Yishmael, your man, comes home, say unto him, The nail of the tent which you have is in very good, 
do not have is very good. Do not put it away from the tent. And Abram finished commanding the woman, and he rode off to his home to the land of Palestine. And when Yishmael came to his tent, his woman went forth to meet him with joy and cheerful heart. And she said to him, An old man came here from the land of Palestine, and thus was his appearance. And he asked for you, and you were not here, so I brought out bread and water and he ate and drank and his heart was comforted and he spoke these words to me when yishmael your man comes home say to him the nail of the tent which you have is very good do not put it away from the tent and yishmael knew that it was his father and that his woman had honored him and yahuwah blessed yishmael and Yishmael then rose up and took his woman and his children and his cattle and all belonging to him. And he journeyed from there and he went to his father in the land of Palestine. And Abraham related to Yishmael his son the transaction which the first woman that Yishmael took according to what she did. And Yishmael and his children dwelt with Abraham many days in the land, and Abram dwelt in the land of Pelashim a long time. And the days increased and reached twenty-six years, and after that, Abraham with his servants and all belonging to him went from the land of Pelashim and removed to a great distance. And they came near Hebron, and they remained there, and the servants of Abram dug wells of water, and Abraham and all belonging to him dwelt by the water. And all the servants of Amalek, king of Pelashim, heard the report that Abram's servants had dug wells of water in the borders of the land, and they came and quarreled with the servants of Abraham, and they robbed them of great well which they had dug. And Avimelech, king of Pelashim, heard of this affair, and with Pichol, the captain of his host, and twenty of his men came to Abraham. And Amimelech spoke to Abraham concerning his servants. And Abraham rebuked Amimelech concerning the well of which his servants had robbed him. And Amimelech said to Abraham, As Yahuwah lives, who created the whole earth, I did not hear of the act which my servants did unto your servants until this day. And Abraham took seven ewe lambs and gave them to Abimelech, saying, Take these, I pray you, from my hands, that it may be a testimony for me that I dug this well. And Abimelech took the seven ewe lambs which Abraham had given to him, for he had also given him cattle and herds in abundance. And Abimelech swore to Abraham concerning the well. Therefore, he called that well Be'er Sheva. For there they were both swore concerning it. And they both cut a covenant in Be'er Sheva. And Abimelech rose up with Pichol, the captain of his host, and all his men. And they returned to the land of the Pelashim, and Abraham and all belonging to him dwelt in Be'er Sheba, and he was in that land a long time. And Abraham planted a large grove in Be'er Sheba, and he made it to four gates facing the four sides of the earth, and he planted a vineyard in it, so that if a traveler came to Abraham, he entered any gate which was in his road and remained there, and ate and drank, and satisfied himself, and then departed. For the house of Abraham was always open to the sons of men that passed and repassed, who came daily to eat and drink in the house of Abraham. And any man who had hunger, and came to Abraham's house, Abraham would give him bread, that he might eat and drink and be satisfied, and any one that came naked to his house would be clothed with garments as he might choose and give him silver and gold and make known to him Yahuwah, who had created him in the earth. This did Abraham all his life. And Abraham and his children and all belonging to him dwelt in Beersheba, and he pitched his tent as far as Kevran, 
and Abraham's brother Nahor and his father and all belonging to them dwelt in Haran. For they did not come with Abraham to the land of Kenyan, and children were born to Nahor, which Melchah, the daughter of Haran, and sister to Sarah, Abraham's woman, bore to him. And these are the names of those that were born to him, Uts, Buzz, Kumuel, Kesed, Hazo, Fladash, Yidlaf, and Beluel. Being eight sons, these are the children of Melchah, which bore to Nahor, Avram's brother. And Nahor had a concubine, and her name was Re Uma, and she also bore to Nahor Zevach, Gash, Gashak, Tashak, Maacha, being four sons, and the children that were born to Nahor were twelve sons besides his daughters, and they also had children born to them in Haran. And the children of Uts, the firstborn of Nechor, were Avi, Kerah, Gaden, Malas, and Deborah, their sister. And the son of Buzz were Barakel, Naamath, Sheva, and Madonu. And the sons of Kumuel were Aram, Kavov, and the sons of Kesad were Anamelech, Meshiai, Benon, and Yephi, and the sons of Kazo were Peldash, Mahi, Ophirar, and the sons of Peldash were Arud, Kaman, Marad, and Molech, and the sons of Yidlaf were Moshan, Kushan, and Mutzai, and the children of Bethuel were Sachar, Laban, and their sister Revka. These are the families of the children of Nahor that were born to them in Haran, and Avram, the son of Kumiel, and Revov, his brother, went away from Haran, and they found a valley in the land by the river Parath, and they built a city there, and they called the name of the city after the name of Pethor, the son of Aram. That is Aram Naharayim unto this day. And the children of Kassad also went to dwell there, where could find a place. And they went and found a valley opposite to the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they there built themselves a city. And they called the name at the city Kassad after the name of their father. That is the land of Kashdiyama unto this day. And the Kashdim dwelt in that land, and they were fruitful and multiplied exceedingly. And Terach, father of Nachor, and Abraham went and took another woman in his old age, and her name was Pelah. And she conceived and bore him a son, and he called his name Tesova. And Terach lived twenty-five years after he begot Tesova. And Terach died in that year, that is, in the thirty-fifth year of the birth of Yitzchak, son of Abraham. And the days of Terach were two hundred and five years, and he was buried in Haran. And Tesova, the son of Terach, lived thirty years, and he begot Aram, Achelis, and Merek, and Abram, and Aram, son of Tesopha, son of Terak, had three women, and he begot and the man increased greatly. And Avram, the son of Tesava, and his brothers, and all his household journeyed from Haran, and they went to dwell where they should find a place, for their property was too great to remain in Haran, for they could not stop in Haran together with their brethren and children of Nacor. And Aram, the son of Tesava, went with his brethren, and they found a valley at the distance towards the eastern country, and they dwelt there. 
And they also built a city there, and they called the name thereof Aran, after the name of the eldest brother, that is, Aram Tesovah, to this day. And Yitzchak, the son of Abraham, was growing up in those days, and Abraham, his father, taught him the way of Yahuwah to know Yahuwah, and Yahuwah was with him. And when Yitzchak was 37 years old, Yishmael, his brother, was going about with him in the tent, and Yishmael boasted of himself, and Yitzchak saying, I was 13 years old when Yahuwah spoke to my father to circumcise us, and I did according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spoke to my father, and I gave my soul unto Yahuwah, and I did not transgress his word, which he commanded my father. And Yitzchak answered Yishmael, saying, Why do you boast to me about this, about a little bit of your flesh, which you did take from your body, concerning which Yahuwah commanded you? As Yahuwah lives, the Elohim of my father Abraham, if Yahuwah should say unto my father, Take now your son Yitzchak, and bring him up an offering before me, I would not refrain, but I would joyfully accede to it. And Yahuwah heard the words of Yitzchak, spoke to Yishmael, and it seemed good in the sight of Yahuwah. And he thought to try Abraham in this matter. And the day arrived when the sons of Elohim came and placed themselves before Yahuwah, and Satan also came with his sons of Elohim before Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said to Satan, Whence come you? And Satan answered Yahuwah and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And Yahuwah said to Satan, what is your word to me concerning all the children of the earth? And Satan answered Yahuwah and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve you and remember you when they require anything from you. And when you give them the thing which they require from you, they sit at their ease and forsake you and they remember you no more. Have you seen Abram, the son of Terak? who at first had no children, and he served you, and erected altars to you wherever he came, and he brought up offerings upon them, and he proclaimed your name continuously to all the children of the earth. And now that his son Yitzchak is born to him, he has forsaken you. He has made a great feast for all the inhabitants of the land, and Yahuwah he has forgotten. For amidst all that he has done, he brought you no offering, neither burnt offering, nor peace offering, neither ox, lamb, nor goat, of all that he killed on that day that his son was weaned. Even from the time of his son's birth until now, being thirty-seven years, he built no altar before you, nor brought any offering to you. For he saw that you did give what he requested before you. And he therefore forsook you. And Yahuwah said to Satan, Have you thus considered my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon the earth, a perfect and upright man before me, one that fears Elohim and avoids evil. As I live, were I to say unto him, Bring up Yitzchak, your son, before me. He would not withhold him from me, much more if I told him to bring up a burnt offering before me from his flock or herds. And Satan answered Yahuwah and said, Speak then now unto Abraham as you have said, and you will see whether he will not this day transgress and cast aside your words. At that time, the word of Yahuwah came to Abraham. And he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said to him, Take now your son, your Yachad, whom you love, even Yitzchak, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which shall be shown to you, for there will you see a cloud and the glory of Yahuwah. And Abraham said within himself, 
How shall I separate my son Yitzchak from Sarah, his mother, in order to bring him up for a burnt offering before Yahuwah? And Abraham came to the tent, and she sat before, and he sat before Sarah, his woman, and he spoke these words to her: My son Yitzchak is growing up, and he has not for some time studied the service of his Elohim. Now tomorrow, I will go and bring him to Shem and Ebar, his son. And there he will learn the ways of Yahuwah, for they will teach him to know Yahuwah as well as to know that when he prays continuously before Yahuwah, he will answer him. Therefore, there he will know the way of serving Yahuwah Eloheinu. And Sarah said, You have spoken well. Go, my Lord, and do unto him as you have said, but remove him not at a great distance from me, neither let him remain there too long, for my soul is bound without his soul. And Abram said unto Sarah, My daughter, let us pray to Yahuwah Eloheinu, that he may do good with us. And Sarah took her son Yitzchak, and he abode all night with her, and she kissed and embraced him and gave him instructions until morning. And she said to him, O oh my son, how can my soul separate myself from you? And she still kissed him and embraced him, and she gave Abraham instructions concerning him. And Sarah said to Abraham, O oh my Lord, I pray you to take heed of your son and place your eyes over him, for I have no other son nor daughter but him. O oh, forsake him not. If he be hungry, give him bread. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Do not let him go on foot. Neither let him sit in the sun. Neither let him go by himself in the road. Neither force him from whatsoever he may desire. But do unto him as he may say to you. And Sarah wept bitterly the whole night on account of Yitzchak. And she gave him instructions till morning. And in the morning, Sarah selected a very fine and beautiful garment from those garments which she had in the house, and Avimelech had given to her. And she dressed Yitzchak, her son, therewith, and she put a turban upon his head, and she enclosed a precious stone on the top of the turban, and she gave him provisions for the road. And they went forth, and Yitzchak went with his father Abraham, and some of their servants accompanied them to see them off the road. And Sarah went out with them, and she accompanied them upon the road to see them off. And they said to her, Return to the tent. And when Sarah heard the words of her son Yitzchak, she wept bitterly, and Abraham, her man, wept with her. And their son wept with them a great weeping. Also those who went with them wept greatly. And Sarai caught hold of her son Yitzchak, and she held him in her arms, and she embraced him, and continued to weep with him. And Sarah said, Who knows if after this day I shall ever see you again? And they still wept together, and Abram, Sarah, and Yitzchak, and all those that accompanied them on the road wept with them, and Sarah afterward turned away from her son, weeping bitterly, and all her men servants and maid servants returned with her to the tent. And Abraham went with Yitzchak, his son, to bring him up as an offering before Yahuwah, as he had commanded him. And Abram took his, took two of his young men with him, Yishmael, the son of Hagar, and Eleazar, the son. They went together with them. And while they were walking in the road, the young men spoke these words to themselves. And Yishmael said to Eleazar, Now my father Abram is going with Yitzchak to bring him up for a burnt offering of Yahuwah, as he commanded him. Now, when he returns, he will give unto me all that he possesses to inherit after him, for I am his firstborn. And Eleazar answered Yishmael and said, Surely Abram did cast you away with your mother and swear that you should not inherit anything of all the possessions. And to whom will he give all that he has with his treasures 
but unto me, his servant, who has been faithful in his house, who has served him night and day, and has done all that he has desired of me. To me will he bequeath at his death all that he possesses. And while Abraham was proceeding with his son, Yitzchak, along the road, Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man, humble and of contrite ruach. And he approached Abraham and said to him, Are you silly or brutish that you go to do this thing this day to your Yechai? For Elohim gave you a son in your latter days, in your old age, and will you go and slaughter him this day because he committed no violence? And will you cause the soul of your Yechad to perish from the earth? Do you not know and understand that this thing cannot be from Yahuwah? For Yahuwah cannot do unto man such evil upon the earth to say to him, Go slaughter your child. And Abraham heard this and knew that it was the word of Satan who endeavored to draw him astray aside from the way of Yahuwah. But Abram would not hearken to the voice of Satan, and Abram rebuked him so that he went away. And Satan returned and came to Yitzchak, and he appeared to Yitzchak in the figure of a young man, comely and well-favored. And he approached Yitzchak and said to him, do you not know and understand that your old silly father brings you to the slaughter this day for naught? Now therefore, my son, do not listen nor attend to him, for he is a silly old man, and let not your precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from the earth. And Yitzchak heard this and said to Abraham, Have you heard, my father? That which this man has spoken, even thus has he spoken. And Abraham answered his son Yitzchak and said to him, Take heed of him and do not listen to his words nor attend to him, for he is Satan, endeavoring to draw us aside this day from the commands of Elohim. And Abraham still rebuked Satan, and Satan went from them. And seeing he could not prevail over them, he hid himself from them. And he went and passed before them in the road, and he transformed himself to a large brook of water in the road. And Abram and Yitzchak and his two young men reached that place, and they saw a brook large and powerful as the mighty waters. And they entered the brook and passed through it, and the waters at first reached their legs. And they went deeper in the brook, and the waters reached up to their necks, and they were all terrified on account of the water. And while they were going over the brook, Abraham recognized that place, and he knew that there was no water there before. And Abraham said to his son, Yitzga, I know this place in which there was no brook, no water. Now, therefore, it is this Satan who does all this to us to draw us aside this day from the commands of Elohim. And Abram rebuked him and said to him, Yahuwah rebuke you, O Satan, be gone from us, for we go by the commands of Elohim. And Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham, and he went away from them, and the place again became dry land as it was at first. And Abram went with Yitzchak towards the place that Elohim had told him. And on the third day, Abram lifted up his eyes and saw the place at a distance which Elohim had told him of. And a pillar of fire appeared to him that reached from the earth to heaven, and a cloud of glory upon the mountain, and the glory of Yahuwah was seen in the cloud. And Avram said to Yitzchak, My son, do you see in that mountain which we perceive at a distance that which I see upon it? And Yitzchak answered and said to his father, I see, lo, a pillar of fire and a cloud, and the glory of Yahuwah is seen upon the cloud. And Avram knew that his son Yitzchak was accepted before Yahuwah for a burnt offering. And Avram said to Eleazar and unto Yishmael his son, Do you also see that which we see upon the mountain, which is at a distance? 
and they answered and said we see nothing more than like the other mountains of the earth and abram knew that they were not accepted before yahuwah to go with them and abram said to them abide ye here with the ass while i and yitzchak my son will go to yonder mountain and worship there before yahuwah and then return to you and eleazar and yishmael remained in the place as abraham had commanded and abraham took wood for a burnt offering and placed it upon his son yitzchak and he took the fire and the knife and they both went to that place and then they were going along yitzchak said to his father behold i see here the fire and wood and where then is the lamb that is to be burnt offering before Yahuwah. And Abram answered his son Yitzchak, saying, Yahuwah has made choice of you, my son, to be a perfect burnt offering instead of the lamb. And Yitzchak said to his father, I will do all that Yahuwah spoke to you with joy and cheerfulness of heart. And Abram again said to Yitzchak, his son, is there in your heart any thought or counsel concerning this which is not proper? Tell me, my son, I pray you, O oh, my son, conceal it not from me. And Yitzchak answered his father Abram, and said unto him, O oh, my father, as Yahuwah lives and your soul lives, there is nothing in my heart to cause me to deviate either to the right or to the left from the word that he has spoken to you. Neither limb nor muscle has moved or stirred at this, nor is there in my heart any thought or evil counsel concerning this. But I am of joyful, cheerful heart in this matter, and I say, Blessed is Yahuwah, who has this day chosen me to be a burnt offering before him. And Avram greatly rejoiced at the words of Yitzchak, and they went on and came together to the place that Yahuwah had spoken of. And Abraham approached to build the altar in that place, and Abraham was weeping, and Yitzchak took stones and mortar until they had finished building the altar. And Abraham took the wood and placed it in order upon the altar which had built. He took his son Yitzchak and bound him in order to place him upon the wood which was upon the altar to slay him for a burnt offering before Yahuwah. And Yitzchak said to his father, Bind me securely and then place me upon the altar lest I should turn and move and break loose from the force of the knife upon my flesh and thereby profane the burnt offering. And Avram did so. And Yitzchak still said to his father, O oh, my father, when you shall have slain me and burnt me for an offering, take with you that which shall remain of my ashes to bring to Sarah, my mother, and say to her, This is the sweet-smelling savor of Yitzchak. But do not tell her this if she should sit near a well or upon a high place, lest she should cast her soul after me and die. And Abram heard the words of Yitzchak, and he lifted up his voice and wept when Yitzchak spoke these words. And Abram's tears gushed down upon Yitzchak, his son. And Yitzchak wept bitterly and said to his father, Hasten you, O my father, and do with me the will of Yahuwah Eloheinu, as he has commanded you. And the hearts of Abram and Yitzchak rejoiced at this thing which Yahuwah had commanded them. But the eye wept bitterly while the heart rejoiced. And Abraham bound his son Yitzchak and placed him on the altar upon the wood. And Yitzchak stretched forth his neck upon the altar before his father. And Abraham stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay his son as a burnt offering before Yahuwah. At that time, the angels of mercy came before Yahuwah and spoke to him concerning Yitzchak, saying, O Yahuwah, you are a merciful and compassionate king over all that you have created in heaven and in earth, and you support them all. Give therefore ransom and redemption instead of your servant Yitzchak, and pity, and have compassion upon Abram and Yitzchak, his son, 
who are this day performing your commands. Have you seen, O Yahuwah, how Yitzchak, the son of Abram, your servant, is bound down to the slaughter like an animal? Now, therefore, let your pity be roused for them, O Yahuwah. At that time, Yahuwah appeared unto Abram and called unto him from heaven and said to him, Lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do you anything unto him. For now I know that you fear Elohim in performing this act, and in not withholding your son, your Yakad, from me. And Abram lifted up his eyes and saw and beheld a ram was caught in the thicket by his horns. That was the ram which Yahuwah Elohim had created in the earth in that day that he made earth and heaven. For Yahuwah had prepared this ram from that day to be a burnt offering instead of Yaakov. And this ram was advancing to Abraham when Satan caught hold of him and entangled his horns in a thicket that he might not advance to Abraham in order that Abraham might slay his son. And Abraham, seeing the ram advancing to him and Satan withholding him, fetching him and brought him before the altar, and he loosened his son Yaakov from his binding and he put the ram in his stead. And Abraham killed the ram upon the altar and brought it up as an offering in the place of his son Yaakov. And Abraham sprinkled some of the blood of the ram upon the altar. And he exclaimed and said, This in, a, in the place of my son, and may this be considered this day as the blood of my son before Yahuwah. And all that Abraham did on this occasion by the altar, he would exclaim and say, This is in the room of my son, and may it this day be considered before Yahuwah in the place of my son. And Abraham finished the whole of the service by the altar, and the service was accepted before Yahuwah, and was accounted as, as if he had been Yitzchak. And Yahuwah blessed Abram and his seed on that day. And Satan went to Sarah, and he appeared to her in the figure of an old man, very humble and meek. And Abraham was yet engaged in the burnt offering before Yahuwah. And he said unto her, do you not know all the work that Abram was made with your Yakad this day? For he took Yitzchak and built an altar and killed him and brought him up as a sacrifice upon the altar. And Yitzchak cried and wept before his father, but he looked not at him, neither did he have compassion over him. And Satan repeated these words, and he went away from her. And Sarah heard all the words of Satan, and she imagined them to be an old man from amongst the sons of men who had been with her son and had come and told her these things. And Sarah lifted up her voice and wept and cried out bitterly on account of her son. And she threw herself upon the ground, and she cast dust upon her head. And she said, O oh, my son, Yitzka, my son, oh, that I had this day died instead of you. And she continued to weep and said, It grieves me for you, O oh, my son, my son Yitzchak, oh, that I had died this day in your stead. And she still continued to weep and said, It grieves me for you. After that, I have reared you and have brought you up. Now my joy is turned into mourning over you. I that had a longing for you and cried and prayed to Elohim till I bore you at 90 years old. And now have you served this day for the knife and the fire to be made an offering. But I console myself with you, my son, in its being the word of Yahuwah, for you did perform the command of your Elohim, for who transgresses the word of our Elohim? in whose hands is the soul of every living creature. You are just, O Yahuwah Eloheinu, for all your works are good and righteous. For I also am rejoiced with your word, which you did command. And while my eyes weeps bitterly, my heart rejoices. 
and Sarah laid her head upon the bosom of one of her handmaids, and she became as still as stone. She afterward rose up and went about making inquiries until she came to Hebron, and she inquired of all those whom she met walking on the road, and no one could tell her what had happened to her son. And she came with her maidservant and men servant to Quarat Arba, which is Hebron, and she asked concerning her son, and she remained there while she sent some of her servants to seek where Abraham had gone with Yitzchak. They went to seek him in the house of Shem and Ebar, and they could not find them, and they sought throughout the land, and he was not there. And behold, Satan came to Sarah in the shape of an old man, and he came and stood before her, and he said to her, I spoke falsely unto you, for Abraham did not kill his son, and he is not dead. And when she heard the word of her joy was so exceedingly violent on account of her son, that her soul went out through joy. She died and was gathered to her people. And when Abraham had finished his service, he returned with his son Yiska to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Be'er Be Sheva, and they came home. And Abraham sought for Sarah and could not find her, and he made inquiries concerning her. And they said unto him, she went as far as Hebron to seek you both where you had gone, for thus she was informed. And Abraham and Yitzchak went to her to shout to Hebron, and when they found that she was dead, they lifted up their voices and wept bitterly over her. And Yitzchak fell upon his mother's face and wept over her. And he said, O oh, my mother, my mother, how have you left me, and where have you gone? Oh, how have you left me? And Abram and Yitzchak wept greatly, and all their servants wept with them on account of Sarah. And they mourned over her, a great and heavy mourning. And the life of Sarah was one hundred and twenty-seven years, and Sarah died. And Abram rose up from before his dead to seek a burial place to bury his woman Sarah. And he went and spoke to the children of Heth, the inhabitants of the land, saying, I am a stranger and sojourner with you in your land. Give me a possession of a burial place in your land, that I may bury my dead from before me. And the children of Heth said unto Abram, Behold, the land is before you in the choice of your sepulchres. Bury your dead, for no man shall withhold you from burying your dead. And Abraham said to them, If you are agreeable to this, go and entreat for me Ephron, the son of Tessachar, requesting that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which is in the end of this field, and I will purchase it from him for whosoever he desires for it. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, and they went and called for him. And he came before Abraham, and Ephron said unto Abraham, Behold, all you require your servant will do. And Abraham said, No, but I will buy the cave and the field which you have for value, in order that it may be for a possession of burial place forever. And Ephron answered and said, Behold, the field and the cave are before you. Give whatsoever you desire. And Abraham said, only at full value will I buy it from your hand and from the hands of all those that go into the gate of your city and from the hand of your seed forever. And Ephron and all his brethren heard this, and Abram weighed to Ephron four hundred shekels of silver in the hands of Ephron and in the hands of all his brethren. And Abram wrote his transaction, and he wrote it and testified it with four witnesses. And these are the names of the witnesses, Amagel, son of Abishna, and Kitty, Adakhorom, son of Ashunach, and Shevi'i, Abdon, son of Akaram, the Gimari, Bakdel, the son of Bushdish, and Tisidoni. And Abram took the cipher 
and the purchase and took it to his treasures. And these are the words that Abram wrote in the cipher, namely, that the cave and the field Abram bought from Ephron, the Kithi, and from his seed and from those that go out of the city and from their seed forever are to be a purchase to Abram and his seed and those that go forth from his loins for a possession of burial forever. And he put a signet to it and testified it with witnesses. And the field and the cave that was in it and all that place were made sure unto Abram and unto his seed after him from the children of Heth. Behold, it is before Mamre and Hebron, which is in the land of Kenyan. And after this, Abraham buried his woman Sarah there. And that place and all its boundaries became Abraham and unto his seeds were a possession of burial place. And Abram buried Sarah with pomp as observed at the intermittent of kings. And she was buried in a very fine and beautiful garments. And at her coffin was Shem, his sons Eber, Avimelech, together with Enar, Ashkol, and Mamre, and all the grandees of the land followed her coffin. And the days of Sarah were one hundred and twenty-seven years, and she died. And Abraham made a great and heavy mourning, and he performed the rites of the mourning for seven days. And all the inhabitants of the land comforted Abraham and Yitzchak his son on account of Sarah. And when the days of their mourning passed by, Abraham sent away his son Yitzchak, and he went to the house of Shem and Ebar to learn the ways of Yahuwah and his instructions, and Abraham remained there three years. At that time Abraham rose up with all his servants, and they went and returned homeward to Be'er Sheva. And Abraham and all his servants remained in Beersheba. And at the revolution of the year, Avimelech, king of the Peleshim, died in that year. He was 193 years old at his death. Abraham went with his people to the land of Peleshim, and they comforted the whole household and all his servants. And he then turned and went home. And it was after the death of Avi Melech, that the people of Gerar took Ben Malik, his son, and he was only twelve years old, and they made him lying in the place of his father, and they called his name Avi Melech after the name of his father, for thus it was their custom to do in Gerar, and Avi Melech reigned instead of Avi Melech, his father, and he sat upon his throne. And Lot, the son of Haran, also died in those days, in the thirty-ninth year of the life of Yishka. And all the days that Lot lived were one hundred and forty years, and he died. And these are the children of Lot that were born to him by his daughters. The name of the firstborn was Moab, and the name of the second was ben Ammoni. And the two sons of Lot went and took themselves women from the land of Canaan, and they bore children to them. And the children of Moab were Ed, Maon, Tarsus, Quanvil, four sons. These are fathers to the children of Moab unto this day. And all the families of the children of Lot went to dwell wherever they should light upon, for they were fruitful and increased abundantly. And they went and built themselves cities in the land where they dwelt, and they called the names of the cities which they built after their own names. And Nahor, the son of Terah, brother of Abraham, died in those days in the fortieth year of the life of Yishka. And all the days of Nahor were one hundred and seventy-two years, and he died and was buried in Haran. And when Abraham heard that his brother was dead, he grieved sadly, and he mourned over his brother many days. And Abraham called for Eleazar, his head servant, to give him orders concerning his house, and he came and stood before him. And Abraham said to him, Behold, I am old, I do not know the day of my father's death. 
for I am advanced in days. Now therefore rise up, go forth, and do not take a woman for my son from this place and from this land, from the daughters of Kenny and Am, amongst whom we dwell, but go to my land and to my birthplace, and take from hence a woman for my son. And Yahuwah Elohim of heaven and earth, who took me from my father's house and brought me to this place, and said unto me, To your seed will I give this land for an inheritance forever. He will send his angel before you and prosper your way, that you may obtain a woman for my son from my family and from my father's house. And the servant answered his master Abraham and said, Behold, I go to your birthplace and to your father's house and take a woman for your son from there. But if the woman be not willing to follow me to this land, shall I take your son back to the land of your birthplace? And Abraham said unto him, Take heed that you bring not my son hither again. For Yahuwah, before whom I have walked, he will send his angel before you and prosper your way. And Eleazar did as Abraham answered him, and Eleazar unto Abraham his master upon this matter. And Eleazar rose up and took ten camels of the camels of his master and ten men from his master's servants with him. And they arose up and went to Haran, the city of Abraham and Nahor, in order to fetch a woman for Yiskaf, the son of Abraham. And while they were gone, Abraham sent to the house of Shem and Abar, and they brought from thence his son Yitzchak. And Yitzchak came home to his father's house to Be'er Sheba, while Eleazar his men came to Haran, and they stopped in the city by the watering place, and he made his camels to kneel down by the water, and they remained there. And Eleazar, Abram's servant, prayed and said, O Elohim of Abram, my master sent me, I pray you to good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master, that you shall appoint this day a woman for my master's son from his family. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Eleazar for the sake of the servant Abram. And he happened to meet with the daughter of Beliel, of Bethuel, the son of Melchah, the woman of Nacor, brother to Abraham and Eleazar, came to her house, and Eleazar related to them all his concerns that he was Abraham's servant, and they greatly rejoiced at him. And they all blessed Yahuwah, who brought this thing about, and they gave him Rivka, the daughter of Bethuel, for a woman for Yitzchah. And the young woman was of very comely appearance. She was a virgin, and Rivka was ten years old in those days. And Bethuel and Levan and his children made a feast on that night. And Eleazar and his men came and ate and drank and rejoiced there on that night. And Eleazar rose up in the morning, he and the men that were with him. And he called to the whole household of Bethuel, saying, Send me away that I may go to my master. And they rose up and sent away Rivka and her nurse Deborah, the daughter of Uts. And they gave her silver and gold, men servants and maid servants. And they blessed her. And they sent Eleazar away with his men. And the servants took Rivka. And he went and returned to his master to the land of Kenyan. And Yitzchak took Rivka. And she became his woman, and he brought her into the tent. And Yitzchak was forty years old when he took Rivka, the daughter of his uncle Bethuel, for a woman.